Well, I would say the fundamental thing for me that is at stake is our ability to say what we want to say. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really basic. Um, that increasingly the view is that there are certain things that should not be said because they are problematic or offensive for the listener. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to say it's a move from objectivism to subjectivism because the speaker also has a subjective point of view, but it's a move from uh, a subjectivism that gives privileges to someone of a positive sort, namely expression, and instead cedes the privilege to a different kind of subjectivity, which is that that can shut things down. Um, and for me, those are really, really high stakes. I think it's a wonderful point. But I, I, I do think, uh, I said in the beginning, you know, we are in a living in an expanding world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, we saw in this morning's discussion, we have art history, you talk about Western civilization, but there are many other uh, histories there are many different perspectives and clearly, and also in the academic world, not all of them have been heard before and, ha and so there are, there are levels of inequality. So the question is how can we indeed expand without you know, shutting voices down? Because I think it's all about hearing more voices, uh, having a wider discussion, have a, so to say more diversity in our, our, in our discussions. Uh, with all, but I think we should also be cognizant of the emotions of those who were not heard before. So there's this very delicate balance, yeah, I think, that absolutely. you have to strike where you, you know, this is funny way where you have to be really tolerant, but you know, do you want to be tolerant of intolerance? Probably not. And I think that's where it becomes it, tricky. Yep. So I, I agree completely with both of you, but I, I think something strange has happened, and it's to do with the way in which um, media and movements travel and America has a very very important voice particularly in the Anglo world and all this and in a sense I feel I don't feel when I'm talking to students that I'm being shut up um, when I say something which might come from a prior generation uh, I ran a campaign called free expression is no offense when I was president of Penn so I know about all these insult and Salman Rushdie and all the other phenomena but I think what's happened now is that the cu culture wars and and the people who are doing the shutting up are not only the new Puritans but they are the far right and they have co-opted what in, in some instances are are you know people who really don't have a say and who should have a say into um, being the uh, opposition to free expression, whereas in fact it is the far right, uh, the alt-right, who are the opposers of free expression and only want the kind of expression that's owned by very rich media to be theirs. And, you know, I, I think we have to play this carefully. I, I don't think it's, um, you know, it's culture wars between two sides. I think there's a side with a lot of power, and then there are many other small others. I'd like to jump on in, in on this, yes. Uh, I heard this morning, and at the beginning of this conversation, uh, and in fact in the essay, uh, a kind of a binary argument. You're with tradition or you're not. It's one tradition. Uh, and I think what we're all seeing here also is not only there are more of those traditions, there are more points of view, uh, but we in the cultural sector are in a very, I think, are in a very important position to embrace the gray area in between these two. And what's happening is we're seeing the gray area shrinking and that platform is less and less available to people. While that is so incredibly important to find some way to recognize these different traditions and to find a way to learn from them and to expand our minds. And I think that's maybe the most worrying thing to me anyway. And that's why it's important to actually ally these forces yeah. with the force of the uh, puritanical far right. Yeah. But um, I must say that if you have this point of indeed, you know, widening and having more perspective, it's not necessarily be, be, will be very comfortable. And I would even add to it, you know, it, it really undermines the central premise of education, is that you're being exactly. shaped by ideas, opinions that are new, they might be uncomfortable. So it's not that everything you learn about the world makes you feel comfortable, but I 
typically feel like, for instance, universities should be in some sense the most uncomfortable place because that's where young minds are shaped. And I feel there's a certain tendency, you know, sometimes parents of young children, they tape uh, foam, you know, in all the corners of the table so that their children <laughs> won't bump their heads. And I think that's definitely not what a university should be. For you, the culture war is a fiction. You don't know how it's going in the daily life. I know. Yep. I know. I came from a country which is where is uh, the freedom and the free speech and to articulating your interests and the whole society is frozen. Mm -hmm. And I know what this means. How killing the souls, how the people are, maybe you know too, uh, you know how the people are, they don't have courage anymore. They, it's a nightmare. And uh, so for you, it's a fiction. It's but to right. do, to do and to show up and the way of the resistance, mm. you know, it's getting more and more difficult. And of course, you don't have any other chance, just resist. Mm. But the other hand, <clears throat> You know, you pay a horrible price. Mm. 